Judges 1, 1 to 4. Now, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, who shall be the first to go up for us in battle against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I've delivered the land into his hand. So Judah said to Simeon, his brother, come up with me to my allotted territory that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. And Simeon went with him. Then Judah went up. You will go up in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. May the Lord deliver every of your own Canaanites and Perizzites into your hand in Jesus' name. Amen. And they killed 10,000 men at Bezek. May the Lord have blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. The title of my short message of this morning is Let Praise Go Before You. Amen. This is the beginning of the journey of the second half of this year. The first Sunday of the second half of this year. And God spoke to me that as we start this journey, tell my children, let my praise go before them. And I will make situation to end in praise for them. Let my praise go before them and I will make situations to end in praise for them. Amen. That is the word of the living God. Here, God, in the passage that you have read, God told the children of Israel, Judah was to lead them to battle. Judah wasn't the firstborn. Reuben was older than Judah. Simeon was older than Judah. But God says, Judah must be the one to lead his children as far as battle was concerned and this is supremely profound and very prophetic if you want to secure victory in battles it's wise to follow god's example and precept that he has laid down for us not that some of us have been through some difficult and challenging situations in the first half of this year just like the psalmist psalm 27 verse number 13 the psalmist said when he looked at the totality of his experiences of life he said given what i've been through i could have fainted i could have lost hope except that i believe that i will yet see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living so the psalmist was saying my standing today is not because i haven't been through stuff i've been through the high waters and the low and the heavy tide but the only reason I'm still standing and going today is because of the hope that I have that I will yet see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Whatever you could have been through, my prayer for you as well is that you will yet see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus. The reason why you and me are still standing today was because God made a way for us. Many of us have been through difficult stuff many of us are still going through challenging stuff even at the moment we knew about the covid and its fallout texas winter storm and its terrible effect many properties damaged some of our members couldn't go back to their house for months i'm not talking of weeks for months they couldn't just get into their house because of the devastation and the destruction Many people face financial situation because of the economic downturn, especially at the height of COVID. Many are facing challenging relationships, scary health problems, children or a child stubborn situation. Many are facing family situation. Many are facing situation in their career. And as I've always said, challenging and difficult season of life it can be physically draining it can be emotionally exhausting and it can be mentally enervating but the good news is that it is no respect of person we are all going through stuff amen, amen. so like i always say never let the devil preach any any wrong message to you that you are the only one going through whatever you are going through in life 
Ecclesiastes 1 9 says there is nothing new under the heavens. Whatever we are going through, some other people in some other places have been through it before. And God took them through it. If God can take them through their own challenge times, God will take you through your own as well in Jesus' name. Amen. So, it's no respect of person. How else can we have a testimony except we go through trials of life? In difficult times that some of us may be going through. Like I often said, it's like a man pushing a boulder up the hill. Strength evaporates so quickly. You lose steam so easily. Energy dwindles so rapidly. Enthusiasm depletes. Hope is lost so swiftly. Fortitude drains fast. Zeal quickly thins out. You are generally demoralized. It's like several battles are coming at you at the same time and from different directions. Like the Englishman we say, when it rains, it pours. And believe, be, believe me, it's like at times you are sleeping, but your mind is never resting. You are working, but it's difficult for you to concentrate. A brother sent a message to me some few days ago. He said, Pastor, because of what I'm going through, I couldn't just concentrate at work. When you get to that point, or if you are in tough situation, there is an antidote. Tough times of life are common to all. Like I always say, tough times are not like a holiday time in Aruba or Cancun or the Caribbean. Tough times are no party time at all. You've got to fight hard against the strong wind of affliction in tough times. And it takes a determined person with strength and steel to see the light at the end of his tunnel. It will take determination. It will take a man of steel a resource to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yet, there's always one for everyone going through the dark tunnels of life. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. Psalm 23 verse 4, the psalmist says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have no cause to fear, because thou art with me. May the Lord be with you. In your own tunnel, may the Lord be with you. When you pass through your own shadow of the valley of death, may the good Lord, may he hold you hand in hand through the tunnel in Jesus' name. In the midst of the despair, to those who are discerning, there will always be occasion to appreciate the goodness of God. And as you, add, as, as, and as you do, your adversity will turn to opportunities in Jesus' name. Look at Joseph in prison and his encounter with the fellow two prisoners. You can call that his own value of the shadow of death. But he didn't, like, he didn't allow the situation to drown him. He still saw opportunity to be a blessing. He approached his two fellow prisoner, prisoners. Why are you looking sad today? Why is your countenance so down? And then they began to explain their situation to him. And in the midst of it, and through it, they did also come out of his own problem. Amen? So that's why I always encourage children of God, don't carry your problem on your forehead. Amen? Amen. There is nobody that is not going through stuff. Yeah? We may be wearing fine dresses all the time. The, the truth is, fine dress, it may cover the defect of the physical body, but it does not cover the affliction of the soul. It doesn't. And he who knows it, knows it. He who is going through it, knows what is going through. So what is my encouragement? Number one, you have to resolve. I will not allow this situation to ruin my life, to ruin my joy, to ruin my emotions. Job 13, 15. Job said, though 
he slays me, yet I'm still going to continue to trust in him. Number two, recant the faithfulness of God in time past. Psalm 89 verse number one, the psalmist says, I'm going to sing of the mercies of the Lord forever and forever with my mouth will like make known his faithfulness unto all generation. So recant the faithful, say it, the Lord I thank you because in time past you have been faithful. When I was down to nothing, you are up to something for me. When I couldn't figure out where to go in so 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 time, you are the one that showed me the way. When I was having problems with my children, you stood up for me. I didn't know how you did it, but I know you have done it before. So go with that kind of attitude. Recant the faithfulness of God. It's not difficult for me to recant the faithfulness of God. Because I knew where God picked me from. I knew how we grew up. I knew how tough and rough, how challenging and very difficult life was when we were growing up. So it's not difficult for me to appreciate the goodness of the Lord in little things of life. Recant the faithfulness of God. Number three, you must remember the place of praise, which I'm going to zero in on. Give praise and thank God in appreciation and in anticipation. Give praise and do what? Thank God in appreciation and in anticipation. You thank God in appreciation of what he has already done. You thank God in anticipation of what he will yet do. Number five, be determined to move past the setback and disappointment. Be determined to move past it. It's said that failing at some point in the journey of life is inevitable, but giving up is inexcusable. It's inexcusable. I want to assure you, know it for sure, this year shall ultimately end in praise for you in Jesus' name. Whatever the situation may be spelling for you at this time, it's not going to end this way. I say ultimately, this year, it will end in praise for your family in Jesus' name. Now, what about Judah and the issue of praise this morning? Judah in Hebrews means to thank God or to praise God. Historically, Judah as a person, his birth was recorded in Genesis 39 25. Born by Leah to Jacob. The Bible says, And she conceived again, that was Leah, and bore his son, and said, Now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah. Now Judah lived to fulfill his prophetic destiny from various accounts in the Bible. In Genesis 49, 8 to 10, the Bible spoke concerning Judah when he was telling us about the attributes of each of the children, the 12 sons of, of Jacob. He said, Judah, you are he whom your brother shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies as they praise you. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's web. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. You will go up in Jesus' name. Amen. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? He concluded the verse number 10. Until she look up, the scepter, which is the symbol of authority, shall not depart from Judah. Neither shall the Lord give her depart from between his feet. And unto him always shall the gathering of his children be. And of course, prophecy was fulfilled when the symbol of authority in Jesus came through the lineage of Judah. So in Psalm 100, verse number 1 to 5, it says, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands, all you people. Serve the Lord with gladness. This is the attitude God wants us to have. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good and his mercy 
is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. So God says in verse number 4, Come, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Like I said, the Judah's name has prophetic significance. If you want to secure victory in the place of prayer, you have to come through praise. Psalm 100 verse number 4 that you read. Judah must go forth in battle. That's what God says in the passage that you read. He said, Judah, you have to go first. Praise must go first in your battle. And God will give you victory in Jesus' name. Look at David, the psalmist of Israel. And Jesus, the savior of the world. The two of them came through the tribe of Judah. If you read about the, 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 you know, the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 1, you will see that Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. The second spiritual significance is, you know, after the ancient Israelites left Egypt, they came out of slavery. God commanded Moses to have them set up their wilderness camp in a specific way. And the encampment lay out of the tribes of Israel was set up according to groups of tribes placed together on each of the camps for side. Numbers chapter 2. Now if you read that account very well, the camps of Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun were located on the eastern side of the tabernacle and were collectively under Judah's command and standard. And Judah will be the first tribe that you will meet at the gate before you get into the tabernacle. So, God used that as, as an archetype of what we should do even when we come to anything that we do with him. The praise of our God in our mouth must go first. Amen? Amen? In Joshua chapter 6, look at the way the wall of Jericho came down. God recommended praise. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Look at the way God secured children, a victory for the children of Israel from the battle with the armies of three nations of Ammon, of Moab, and Montseer. God recommended praise. In all these cases, God secured complete, total, and convincing victories for his children through praise and without having to physically engage traditional weapons of warfare. What are you going through? If you go first with praise, God will give you convincing victory in Jesus' name. Amen. As we start the journey, let the praise of our God, let it go before us. That is what God is saying. And I will make everything that confront them to end in praise for them. In the name of Jesus. Give praise in appreciation of what God has already done. Give thanks in, in anticipation of what he's about to do. Because as you are thanking God, it will surely come to pass in Jesus' name. We are going to rise up at this time. There are certain prophetic blessings that the Lord will help me to release into our lives for the journey of the second half of this year. Let's rise up. Our own contribution to this prophetic blessing from the Lord is just to shout, the loudest amen. From the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse number 19. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Out of you for the journey of the remaining days of this year. Shall proceed thanksgiving. Yeah. And the voice of those who make merry. Yeah. God will multiply you. Yeah. You shall not diminish. Yeah. God will glorify you. You shall not be small. Amen. Your children shall be established as before. Amen. Our congregation shall be established before God. Amen. God will punish all who oppress us. Amen. From Isaiah chapter 58, 11. The Lord God said I should prophesy to everyone this morning. Concerning the journey of the remaining days of this year. The Lord will guide you continually. Amen. The Lord will satisfy your soul in draft. Amen. The Lord will strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of waters. Your water shall not fail. Those from among God and your family shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations. 
You shall be called the repairer of the bridge. You shall be called the restorer of the street to dwell in. From Ezekiel chapter 4, verse number 16. You, your supply of bread shall not be cut off. Your life and means of livelihood shall not be tampered with. You will not eat your bread by weight or anxiety. Neither shall you drink your water by measure of fear. Your supply shall be guaranteed. It shall be in full measure. God will show mercy on you. Men will honor you. Authority will favor you. Whatever you do for a living, God will prosper it. God will protect you. God will protect your children from every form of tragedy. No evil shall befall you. Neither shall evil befall your children. God that has brought you by his mercy to the second half of this year will see you to the end victoriously. We tell your family members in the name of Jesus. And as you go into the rest of the journey of this week, may the Lord answer you in your day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send up unto you from the sanctuary. May he comfort you out of Zion. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you. May God lift up his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace this week. This we ask for the name of God the Father. And God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. And the people of God will shout it loud. God bless you. Have a beautiful week. We hope you were blessed by today's sermon. Please subscribe to get up-to-date messages from RCCG House on the Rock. For further information, kindly send an email to info at hotrtx.org.